Joe Burrow played with his calf injury and has been. Contrast in Cleveland, there was a conscious decision made by, according to the team on Sunday, it was a collective decision for Deshaun Watson to not play with a shoulder injury that he suffered against the Titans in week three. Coach Kevin Stefanski yesterday talking to reporters. We're going to play for you the question and the answer on the decision-making process that resulted in Deshaun Watson sitting out the game that the Browns lost to the Baltimore Ravens. Here it is. You said yesterday pretty much it was his call. So he was medically cleared to play. If he would have said, I'm good, he would have played? Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, you know, let me uh, say this, Tony. I mean, he knows his body. He's played through serious pain before, very, very serious injuries. Um, it wasn't a matter of pain tolerance or anything. He just did not feel like he had his full faculties. So that's fine. It's smart. You got to be self-aware. Yeah. Too many players are too stubborn when it comes to that. They think they can go do it and it hurts the team. Remember a couple of years ago, Baker Mayfield, he had that entitlement mentality that even though he had no business playing, this is my job. I'll make the decision whether or not I'm going to play. I'm going to play. This is my job. I'm not coming off the field. Brett Favre was that way. Didn't want to have happen to him what he did to Don Mikowski in 1992. I'm never coming off the field. I'm never giving anyone an opportunity to do the job better than me. So I go out there and I do the job, maybe not as well as I could or as well as the backup could because I'm impaired. So I, I credit Deshaun Watson for having the self-awareness. The caveat is this. When you say Friday, I'm playing. Yeah, that's right. And your teammates right. believe you're playing. Yeah. When, even though the backup, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, got the reps that Deshaun Watson didn't take in practice because he was limited all week, you're still not fully prepared if you don't believe you're playing. If the starter is saying, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, then you get the Sunday morning, and it's like, eh, I don't think I can play. That's a curveball that comes in a little too late for the backup to be ready. And I'm not saying it was intentional that Sean Watson did a rope a dope with Dorian Thompson Robinson and his teammates to protect his own turf. Like if I, Hey, if I'm not going to play, I'm going to wait as long as possible. So this kid's not ready because if he comes in and plays well, what are they going to do with me? Well, you know what they're going to do, Deshaun? They're going to keep paying you because your contract's fully guaranteed. That's what they're going to do. They got no choice but to keep you as the quarterback of the team. So don't worry about that. But that's the the other side of this. Because he said Friday to reporters, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm playing. And the team, I think, believed that. The players believe that. So to have that happen so close to kickoff – kind of throws everything for a little bit of a loop, potentially. That that would be my concern. I like the mature decision because most players can't be sufficiently self-aware to do it. But but don't bluster all week that you're going to play and then all of a sudden, oh, I don't think I can do it. I, I, I hear you there. I hear you there. Now, like, hey, it's on the coaching staff and DTR no matter what to go, hey, we, we, we got to be ready here. We got to be ready no matter what. Don't care what he says. We don't know. Right. Deshaun Watson, I will say, too, and we know this, and this is why I'm not going to question anything right now. I mean, he got beat to crap a lot of years in Houston. I mean, with no pass protection and we, you know, you used to hear me say all the time. Right. I mean, hey, every game, every play is like the last play of the Super Bowl. I mean, he puts himself in harm's way, you know, unlike any other quarterback in the game there for a while. He is the guy that what? had like the, was it the punctured lung or whatever else, and he drove in a car from Houston to Jacksonville to play in a football yeah. game, right? Yep. So I'm yep. not I'm not going to question Deshaun Watson in this department. I'm not. Now, you know, yeah, he gave a little false hope, but I also, you know, putting myself in Deshaun Watson's shoes, I bet you as the week was going, he thought he was going to be able to play. You know, you get to, okay, whoa, I'm hurt on a Monday. Oh, Tuesday, it feels a little bit better. Oh, Wednesday, I'm feeling pretty good. It's feeling a little bit better. Thursday, all right. All right, yeah, I think I'm going to be all, you know, the play. But then at times with injuries like this, you kind of like plateau off. And then that's where I'm not going to question it. 
You know, I think he's a guy that, that wants to play and wants to be great. So that's where I look at it. And they go, you know, then, and then hey, you get to a Saturday and you go, oh, wait, damn, it didn't really get much better than this, you know, overnight, this night. And then Sunday, oh, man, it's kind of the same again. And then you throw a few footballs and you start to go, yeah, I'm medically cleared. There's nothing broken. There's nothing torn. But I don't have the same control or power in my arm, Right. And, you know, when you're making $45 million a year and you're the quarterback and all that, people then start to look at it and question it. But I'm not ready to question Deshaun Watson in this department yet. I know that. Well, and with, in all candor, it doesn't matter whether you will. It doesn't matter whether I will. No, I know. The question is, yeah. what are the guys in the locker room That's think? right. How do they think it was handled? I know. Do they have questions uh -huh. that need to be resolved by Deshaun Watson to the coaching staff? Because something went That's where his here. comment hurts him. If, because the locker room now thinks, wait, right. are you protecting yourself like you're better than us? Or were you really hurt or whatever and you were just hopeful you were going to play? And that, yes, to your point there, there's no doubt about it. That'll make the, the locker room question, wait, what went down there? Was that just like he's protecting himself and he didn't want to put himself out there? Or was it legit that like he couldn't be anywhere clo close to 100% and he was trying to do the better for the team? And that's what the locker room's going to have to figure out on their own. Well, and when the contrast is Joe Burrow with – an impaired leg doing whatever he has to do to help the team win, even though he's putting himself at risk of aggravation and further injury. This is just, is Deshaun Watson able to throw like he ordinarily does? And again, it's about, as I used this phrase earlier, coloring within the lines. You, you, okay, my arm isn't what it always is. What can I do today? Yeah. Let's pick the plays that let me do the things I can do. They don't know my arm isn't fine. They don't know I'm not going to be throwing it 70 yards down the field. They don't know that that I, I've got this limitation or that limitation. We just go out and do the things I can do. Let's adjust on the fly and do what I feel comfortable doing. And I'm out there and I'm playing and I'm with my teammates. I'm earning my money. And again, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying from the standpoint of the men in the locker room who play through all sorts of stuff all the time and don't have the luxury of saying, you know, oh, well, even though I'm medically cleared, I just don't feel right today. Like, how many guys get the – Chris, really, in the NFL, how many guys get – if you're medically cleared, you get your ass out there. Yeah. You get your ass out there. That's the attitude most guys face. No doubt. Not many have that special little, well, even though you're medically cleared, we'll give you the, the ability to make your own decision. I'm surprised Kevin Stefanski spoke about it so candidly. And I can't help but wonder whether there's a little Well, that would be passive aggressive. I, yeah, like, that would be the thing you this? question. Exactly. That that would be the thing you question, right? That to me is the thing that I certainly conspiracy Chris working with conspiracy Florio it's like not even conspiracy. No, I know. It's I know. But if Why we're reading into Why are you saying this to the world? Yes. That that's that's that certainly when when you when you see the development of that Sunday and yesterday and all that you start to go, wait, why are they making it so clear that he was medically cleared? You know, when, when usually when stuff like that is said, it's because they're maybe trying to put the public pressure on him or they're going, damn, we, we think he could have played and he decided not to. And so that's where, you know, that question, you know, comes from. And, and I understand that because we, we've seen that before in the NFL and connected those dots and there's been some truth to it. Uh, so I, you know, again, that's where we're, we're going to probably hear about it as the week goes on or next week, or, you know, through people you hear in the NFL, we'll, we'll, it'll finally filter out the truth there a little bit. And again, if this Deshaun Watson thing doesn't ultimately work for the Browns this year, he ain't getting fired. Stefanski is. So at some level, I can understand why he's a little frustrated that he didn't have his guy out there at least try to win that game, try to do something, try to play through it, try to get this thing continuing in the right direction. And look, they're still two and two. Yeah. And their defense is awesome. And I think if Deshaun Watson's healthy, good chance they win that game on Sunday. They got a bye week but this week. Curious. Yes. Gives Watson a chance to get healthy. Miles Garrett's day to day with a foot injury. But but Stefanski knows that that the stakes are high for him personally this year and for him to say that as candidly as he did 
I think is significant. And I'm sure the Browns would try to downplay it. And again, I told you, the way it was characterized to me, when we're in that blender of, okay, who's injured, what's going on, the team told me it was a collective decision, which seems to conflict with what Kevin Stefanski is saying. So there's something up here. There's something going on. And maybe some would say we're splitting hairs. Sometimes, sometimes the truth resides in the middle of that hair that you have to split. Sometimes there's something that you learn when you split that hair. So uh, anyway, that's what's going on with the Browns. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.